All right, welcome to the Right Now Project. The Right Now Project is a podcast about finding and owning who we are. It's about learning to trust ourselves, finally. It's about learning to trust our guts. It's about uncovering our authenticity and allowing who we are to soar. My name is Guy McPherson. I'm the founder here, and this is my journey too. If you're looking for something easy, this is not it. However, if you're ready to step up, ready to explore who you are, the ups and downs, the scars and scrapes, and realize the incredible value in that, this is your place. Let's get started. So last week, something happened to me. I would have to say that uh, it was a major life shift. And I don't say that lightly, but uh, in my other podcast, I was the trauma therapist podcast, I was interviewing someone. I interview a lot of incredible people who just happened to come on my podcast. And um, all I do is press record and let them share their story. And, you know, I've interviewed some well, very well-known people in the trauma field and a lot of less lesser-known people, although uh, no less inspiring, certainly. And one individual I interviewed last week uh, shifted <laughs> like my reality in a sense. It's kind of crazy to, to even say that. But you know, when, when there are moments in your life where there's a lot going on, there's a confluence of events, right? The, 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 the stars are aligning in such a way that things shift for you. And, and again, this divorce has been such a, an, a life, really, it's a life altering event for me. And, you know, as I said before, uh, divorce is different, obviously for different people. Some people want to divorce, other people don't. I, some people, I had no idea this was going to happen and it did. But it, um, was so crazy. And before I tell you what exactly happened, I just want to set the stage a little bit here. As I've said before, I was, I talked to a divorce coach who was amazing, by the way. Someone has already reached out and asked me for that recommendation. Um, and when I first talked to this person, I remember her saying, you know, how she, what she could offer, how she could help. And one of the things she said was, you know, really think about post-divorce, what you want your life to look like afterwards. And at that time, I thought she was nuts. I mean, on crack. Who's got time? I, there's, I'm not even thinking about that. I can't think about that right now. I don't care about that right now. I'm dealing with, like, what the fuck is going on right now? Well, that time has come. <laughs> you know, that time has come. And again, last week, I was interviewing a gentleman by the name of Doug Dane, and I'm not promoting him. I'm not getting any money for mentioning his name and his book, but this is the reality of the situation. This happened to me, and I had never heard of him. You know, he sent a query and said, you know, can I come on the podcast? Well, I think his agency did, whatever, and turns out he had a book out, and a lot of people, you know, have books, and I read them, and, and, and some I don't. Of course, a lot I don't. But um, he came on the podcast and his background was so horrific. And I'm not going to go into it here. But, and again, you know, I, my other podcast is a trauma podcast. I'm listening to a lot of crazy, horrific things sometimes. And, this was the case with this interview. Now, it wasn't just that, but it was that the way in which Doug had 
moved through this experience of his, uh, which involved kidnapping and other stuff, again, awful stuff. It was the way he moved through it, how he learned to move through that childhood of his, to use that childhood of his, and to shift his awareness, to shift his purpose. And it was that coupled with his presence. He had this very assured kind of matter of fact presence that it kind of stopped me in my tracks, you know. When you think of that, when you when you're talking to someone like that and and you were you know, you're listening to them recount their childhood and, and the horrible events that happened. You, you I couldn't imagine what that was like. And yet to sounds crazy, I know it, but it was that and being in his presence and seeing how he responded and realizing how he turned all this into a book to help other people um, and also that's one major part. The other, you know, I talked about a confluence of events here. The other element, one of the other elements was that I had, I think the previous day I'd spoken with a friend of mine who had went to graduate school with an awesome guy and he's doing very extremely well in his business. And it, these this other, that was one of the other events. The other event is this kind of ongoing uh, thread of being very conscious of where I am right now in my life. Personally, going through this divorce. Professionally, you know, in my business. And these elements really just kind of coalesced and really kind of shook me up and and really made me look at how I've been living my life and the paradigm under which I've been living my life. You know, I, I think I've talked about it before on this podcast of when I was younger, there were certain events which I perceived as meaning that I wasn't smart enough, I wasn't good enough, I wasn't deserving enough. Um, and those really, and coupled with uh, the bullying I experienced when I was, what, 11, maybe 10, 11, 12, 11 or 12, and the negative impact that that had on my self-esteem and how that really influenced and impacted the trajectory of my life in terms of, again, self-esteem, self-confidence, how I showed up in relationships, all those things. And these events, this, this interview with Doug, really kind of was, I guess... You know, uh, you could look at it as the final straw in a sense because it really was. And it really made me look at and question and uh, get so frustrated with myself. And it, it for the first time in a long time, it really made me want to forgive myself for feeling the way I did. And it, you know, I never, it's funny, I'd, I'd been in therapy before, but I never 
questioned that paradigm, that template that was so fucked up. And again, I'm not blaming myself. I was a young kid, right? But nevertheless, it gets to a point where you're like, what the fuck am I doing? Why is this happening? Why is this not happening for me? Where am I in my life? And how do I want to live my life moving forward? How am I perceiving my situation? You know, am I uh, sitting in the corner with a blanket over my head because my ex-wife left me unexpectedly out of the fucking blue? No. You know, no, I'm not. And I'm ready to really look and shift my beliefs. You know, it's funny. Intel, it's not it just intellectually. I know all this shit, and I have known all this shit for a long time. You know, people talk about well, it's one thing to know something or intellectually, but it's another to feel it in your fucking bones, and that's what happened this past week. That's what happened, um, and. In, in a sense, I'm really excited. I'm really energized. I'm fucking pumped. I'm like ready. And on, on the other side, I'm kind of wide-eyed, like what the fuck is going to happen? Where am I going to go? What's my life going to look like? I don't have all the answers. I'm not saying I do, but I am saying that The shift came out of the blue. And you can say, well, it didn't... It, I mean, I wasn't expecting it, right? I wasn't expecting this. But I am ready for it. And I feel like for the first time in a long time, I'm ready for it. You know, a lot of people... When I, when I mentioned that I was getting a divorce, uh, a lot of people reached out and said, oh, it was, you know, it was, it's a great thing. Sorry to hear it, but it, it was the best thing in my life. And blah, 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 blah. And... It, I, I, I will never say that that the divorce in, its, in and of itself was uh, a, a great thing, but it created a shift in my life that I think will be beneficial for me. Um, it has been a, you know, a, a fucking two by four wake up call smack to the head. And that's been... <laughs> Sounds crazy to say that's been good, but it has. I mean, we have to take what's going on in our lives and, <coughs> excuse me, we have choices, right? How are we going to look at this? How are we going to perceive this? What are we going to do with the situation? And are we going to allow ourselves to constantly get negative and and allow that negative loop to take over or are we going to stop it fuck in it because it happens right we're human we get into this it, it's very easy to allow ourselves to get into this negative loop or this disempowering loop but we have to fucking be aware of it and we have to stop it and i think that's another thing that's really happened for me this awareness of how i've been living has opened up has has become more visible the you know the the curtain has opened and i've seen how i've been operating my mind and of course the, the thoughts we have impact our behaviors and a lot of this is subconscious right the paradigm we're living under is so subconscious. It's Im embedded, imbued within us. It's just who we are, right? We, we don't recognize it unless we look at it, unless we're uh, in invited or thrust into the situation where we're forced to look at it. And that's kind of what's happened to me, you know? And I've really realized how 
living within this paradigm of me feeling disempowered and maybe not smart enough and not good enough and not deserving enough has impacted the actions I've taken. And they've not been uh, blatantly or flagrantly bad or negative by any stretch, but they haven't been congruent with who the fuck I really am. And that's someone who really honors creativity and have for the longest time. For the lo- I mean, when I was fucking six years old, I was playing drums on this, you know, crappy little drum set, but I was involved in music and art, and that's that's where my heart and gut moves to. And I spent a lot of time in my childhood and my my my, my uh, young adulthood and on into my adulthood, moving along a different path, you know, trying to appease my father, you know, I loved my dad, but he just had no appreciate, very little appreciation for the value of the arts and what it meant to me. And <laughs> fuck, and, 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 and I'm feeling that constriction and now realizing that I have no choice, right? I have no choice but to honor who the fuck I am, my, my, my gut, my soul, my intuition. And it sounds easy to do, but I don't think there's really a choice that we have because we're going to be fucking miserable. We're going to be swaying off course, right? And conversely, when we are aware of the maybe the disempowering uh, or negative or oppressive template uh, and and paradigm that we've been living under, when we become aware of that and we're able to correct that and shine the light of awareness on that, we become aware, more aware of how our beliefs within that paradigm, our negative beliefs, have been impacting our actions. And we begin to shift those beliefs and consequently create more empowering actions, more inspiring actions for ourselves. We begin to walk differently. We begin to manifest differently. We begin to engage differently. And that is where I'm at and where I want to move into and how I want to live my life. Um, it's hard. It's really fucking hard uh, to do this, I think, you know, but I think that we don't have a choice when we're, when we're going through shit like this, you know, we have to, again, one step in front of the other, move forward, gain confidence, fill our minds and hearts with positive information, with positive uh, talks that we can find online, with positive books, empowering books. We have to take charge and continue to move into the world with positivity, with strength, with power, and inspiration. Um, Thank you for being here. Have an awesome weekend.